Welcome to Bioremediation and Dr. Mickey. In this video, we need to explain the, some terminology related to the bioremediation understanding and also we need to explain the bioremediation of the crude oil and finally, what are the bioremediation requirements. All will be explained after the break. Welcome back. Actually, we have different terms that can be used before to describe the different remediation technologies. That may be depend on the microbial processes to degrade the contaminants. So we have many terms can be used also to describe the same basic process and the terminology can be confusing as well. One of these terms is called the intrinsic bioremediation. So what does it mean the intrinsic bioremediation? Actually, this is the type of the bioremediation that manages the ability of the naturally occurring microbes to degrade the contaminant without taking any engineering steps to enhance the bioremediation process. So to determine the intrinsic bioremediation, we have the following key site characteristics are required as the contaminant bioavailability, to microorganism, the nutrients levels, the presence of minerals to buffer the matrix pH value, also adequate amount of electron acceptors like oxygen, nitrate, and other elements, and also the site-specific contamination migration rate as well. So intrinsic bioremediation is completely naturally without taking any engineering steps. The second term we have is the engineered bioremediation. This is also a type of bioremediation that increasing the biodegradative, even the, the growth of the microorganism using engineered system. This system used to supply the neutrons, electron acceptors, or other materials able to enhance the rate contaminant degradation or the bioremediation process. And the key side characteristics are the same for the intrinsic remediation as well. Also, we have another term called the combination of technologies. That means you can combine two different technologies together. For example, in addition to the biological treatment technology, some non-biological treatment technologies as well can be used. Or source removal may be used to reduce total amount of contaminant present at the site before or concurrent with the bioremediation. For example, the volatile contaminants may be vacuum, extracted, undissolved pools of contaminants may be also pumped from aquifer, or excessively contaminated soil may be excavated as the source of contamination. Also, we have another term called the in-situ bioremediation, as mentioned before. In situ means in place, that means the bioremediation technology or the process can be used in place. That means no need to move the contaminated materials to another place. Both terms intrinsic and engineered bioremediation technologies can be used in situ. Also, we have another term called ex situ bioremediation, as mentioned before also, that requires the removal of contaminated materials by, for example, uh, excavation uh, can be manipulated in some way through the use of the composting or maybe using other technologies. These are very important terminology to know about the bioremediation. Now we need to move to the bioremediation of the crude oil. As you know, the crude oil is the complex mixture of different hydrocarbons and other organic compounds found beneath the earth's surface. It's a dark, sticky fluid naturally occurring in certain rock formations. Also, the crude oil contains the, uh, some carbon and hydrogen with or sometimes without non-metallic elements such as the uh, oxygen and sulfur. And also, the crude oil is highly flammable, generates energy and and it contains more than 30% polyaromatic hydrocarbons. And these polyaromatic hydrocarbons are considered one of the most widespread organic pollutants. 
and potentially health hazard. If you look at these figures provided, you can find some uh, polyaromatic hydrocarbons polluted sites. It's a dark, uh, sticky, liquid, and the table provided shows the some hydrocarbon compounds structures and also classified as small and large molecules or compounds depending on the uh, presence of ring numbers. If it's small, that means containing it up to uh, six aromatic rings as the compounds provided. If large means contain more than six aromatic rings. As you can see, the pyrene, this is the four rings, means small compounds and the ovaline containing more than six rings means this is the large aromatic compounds. So what are the biomediation strategies for the polyaromatic hydrocarbons? Actually the microorganisms able to degrade these hydrocarbons using metabolism or what we call it the co-metabolism. So when the microbe using the co-metabolism, this is especially relevant for the degradation of polyaromatic hydrocarbons mixtures. And both aerobic and anaerobic metabolism exists for the polyaromatic hydrocarbons degradation. And we have four different types of aromatic metabolism. Number one, this is the aerobic metabolism, hybrid type aerobic metabolism, reductive aromatic metabolism, and reductive metabolism in anaerobic microorganisms. And the following figure shows the, the aerobic metabolic pathway of anthracene degradation by uh, alkaliphilic bacteria, Bacillus badius. Uh, you can see the anthracene uh, at the top, three rings, using the two different pathways, using it depends the microbial enzymes it can be produced. So during the pathway, you can find the some rings already uh, uh, open up, and finally the ring uh, fusion to the uh, TCA, the trichloroacetic acid, to uh, perform the some inorganic compounds. So the bioremediation pathway depends on the microorganisms enzymes. If the microbe has this enzyme, maybe goes to this pathway. If he has another enzyme, maybe goes to that way and so on. Now we need to explain what are the bioremediation requirements. And these requirements are drawn in pyramid fashion. You can find at the base of the pyramid, we have three different environmental requirements that are important for the sustainability of the bioremediation which are the absence of high concentration of the toxic to the microorganism, also removal of the metabolites that may inhibit the specific microbial activities, also absence of the higher concentration of some predators as protozoa. Also at the top of the pyramid, we have the microorganism and we have to provide the energy source and electron acceptors to enhance the microbial activity also the proper pH, temperature, and nutrients. So all of these requirements are important for successful bioremediation. This is the end of our video today. And don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to reach all of my new videos. Thank you, good luck, and bye-bye.